This is a quick video on Cine Studio for Unity. Cine Studio is a tool, mostly, I believe, designed for filmmakers that makes a lot of sense when you start using it. I have to say that I haven't used Cine Studio that much. I have only scratched the surface so far, but everything that I'm seeing, I'm liking it. So this is the, um, the sample project that comes with uh, Scene Studio. And it's very good because it's very small, it's very contained, but it kind of shows you everything that you need for Scene Studio. Um, so to start with, it is important to have a few things uh, available for you in the Unity interface, like the hierarchy view. It's very important, uh, the project view, where you have all your content, the timeline, of course, because this is going to be where you do all the assembly of your work. Then there is a sequence uh, window here that is divided in two different parts, the sequence structure and the assets collection. Both of these are, are quite important. And then you have the scene assembly. <clears throat> so the good thing about Scene Studio is that it basically creates everything automatically for you, all the structure, all the containers available for your sequences and your shots. So you create a sequence. So let, let's go here. Um, by the way, this is just a quick overview. So are we are going to go through all the different features um, and kind of the basic structure of Scene Studio. And then I will do another video where, or a different part, second part of this video, where I try to create something from scratch. Uh, but again, because this is a sample project, I believe it's very, it's very convenient to, to actually see how it works. So here, if you go to sequences, this is the sequence of this uh, show of this project. It is only one sequence. And, sen and uh, once you open that, or once you expand that sequence, you have multiple shots. In this case, like uh, seven shots. <clears throat> so when I select the, um, the sequence, what you get here on the right in the sequence assembly, it is a structure that again, this is all created for you automatically, where you can add your characters, your effects elements, your lighting, your photography, and by photography, this means uh, cameras, then props, sets, and audio. So whatever you do here is gonna be shared by all the shots. But then all the shots or each of the shots would have the same containers, meaning that you can override per shot, which is great, right? You can have a master lighting for the sequence, but then when you get to a specific shot, you can override the master lighting or modify the um, master lighting with whatever lighting you select here. So for example, you can see that shot zero one, it has, <clears throat> it has a character, it has some effects elements, it has a lighting, and it has an environment. And as you can see, these are called O1 because they are specifically designed or created for this shot. So if I go to O2, uh, shot O2, it would have the same. So it has a character with an animation for O2. And here you can see variants. So variants can be anything really. It can be a completely different model or a completely different look dev, or it can be different animation for for the shot. So we have an original character and then with variants, we control the animation. And same for lighting, same for props and everything. Um, here in your asset collection is where you have everything that you use for your entire sequence. So you have characters where I have a, where we have like three different characters and each of these, uh, they are prefabs. So you can see like, um, these are the prefabs with, um, different um, animations per shot or different variants per shot. Um, so here you can actually, 
in the timeline. Oops, sorry, I, I cannot select the actual animation. I need to select the, the shot to see what's going on. Um, so when I select the master sequence, I have a timeline, right? Let me lock this one, by the way. So in this timeline, what you can do, you can assemble all these shots. So here you have shot 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and so on. So when I move my timeline, <clears throat> you can see that it's going from shot 0 to shot 1, then shot 2, 3, 4, shot 5, and shot 6, which is just a end credits. And each of these shots, you can dive in by, um, because what you see here, it is kind of what you see here, right? You see the photography, you see the set, you see the audio. So you can expand all of these and they are, will be populated with whatever you're using in your, in your sequence or in your shot. So this is <clears throat> the master sequence because that's what we have selected here. If we select shot 01, then we are inside of the shot 01. And the only thing you can see now is shot 01. So you're working within the context. And then here again, you see the structure that you created here. So you have your character, you have your lighting, you have your effects and your set. And each of these has uh, a clip here, right? So um, the character uh, has a clip that you can manipulate, of course. And you can <clears throat> you can go inside of that um, timeline, and then you have all the animation clips that belong to that timeline. Same for lighting. Uh, in this case, it's empty because the light is, the lights are not animated. But the container is here in case you want to do something. With effects, you go inside of the timeline and then you have like sparks and different types of effects. And then the environment, uh, it also has a timeline, but uh, doesn't really do anything at all. Um, if you go back to the master sequence, again, you can go to any, any of the shots. And if you select a shot here, this is automatically going to the right context. So if I select shot 05, now I'm in shot 05. So the only thing that I can see is that shot. Same thing. Your characters will be here, your lighting will be there, your effects, your set, or your props, or your photography, or your audio. But in this case, we don't have any of that. So that's why it is not there. Um, in the same way, if you look at the hierarchy, you see that everything is disabled. The only thing that is enabled is whatever shot you have selected here. So if I go to shot 02, now, uh, well, actually that's not true. Whatever you have in the, in the timeline. So here, if I go to shot 02, now shot 02 is being activated in, in, in the hierarchy or in the project in Unity. So you can see the only thing that I see in my viewport and in my game uh, view as well, is whatever is activated in the timeline. If I go to shot 06 or shot 00, that's the only thing that is activated and it's the only thing that is activated. Um, that's why it is, in, it is not grayed out as uh, the other uh, shots. Um, so that's how you manipulate things basically. <clears throat> cool. So if you want to create a new shot inside of the sequence, you can just right click here and create. Uh, I think this is a little bit misleading, like create sequence, because I would consider these to be a sequence and these to be shots, even though they refer to all of these as sequences. So if you want to create a new master sequence, you would do this master sequence, that will be a sequence, and then these will be shots, not sequences, as they are defined here in Unity. But, you know, that might be just a different lingo. But if I want to create a new shot inside of this sequence, I would do create sequence. 
and you can call this shot A, for example. And now I'm inside of shot A. But I don't see anything at all, because of course, this shot is not populated with anything. If I go to my master sequence, my shot A has been added to the end here. So we go from shot 06 to shot A. But again, there is nothing. So if you take a look here at my, um, in the hierarchy, there is nothing inside. So if I want to create something, um, well, I need to go here to my sequence assembly um, or my assets collection. This is where I have everything that I already have in the, in the project. So, well, potentially you can take a character uh, that is already available and use it in shot A, or you can create your new characters or unit sets or whatever you need. So if I go to set, for example, I can click on plus and select whatever set is already in the sequence. If there is nothing here uh, that I want to use for my new shot, I can just click on create new sequence asset. So when I do this, it has created a new asset. So I'm going to call this test set. And it's going to ask me if I want to rename it. I'm going to say yes. So now you can see that in my set uh, container hidden the asset collection, I have this set. And also, if I go to my hierarchy under my shot A, I have my set. And here in the timeline, if I select my shot here in the timeline this timeline for my set has already been created so everything the entire structure has been created automatically for me so let's say that my new set is going to be uh, maybe um, let's say uh, plain and uh, cube. Let's say this is my this is my new set. Um, so look at this. When I'm in the um, in a different shot, only whatever belongs to that shot is activated. When I go to shot A, only my new set that has been defined here is now activated. So everything else is disabled. So Unity performs really fast. Of course, I don't see anything at all in my game view because I don't have a camera, I don't have lights. So of course, this is not, um, it is not possible to, to render anything basically. Uh, so I would have to basically create everything else. Um, so let's say in photography, I can use, um, the original camera that I had already in this project. So of course it doesn't match this shot because it's just a random camera that I picked up. Uh, it has also like different variations. So um, yeah, let's pretend that I'm using this camera. Uh, and now you can populate it with characters, lighting and so on. So I can just go here and pick up the lighting for whatever of the shots. So let's say this shot. So I'm using the lighting of shot 05 because maybe it is a master lighting that can be used for, you know, all the shots. Um, of course, if I want specific lighting for my shot, I would have to create it in the same way that we created uh, the set. And same with characters and same with effects, right? Um, you can go here and select this character, and now we have a character. Uh, and this character, we can select any variant or create a new variant for our shot. So let's pretend we're using shot 04. Um, so again, so now we go from here to there and here we are populating this with photography, which is our camera or set and our, um, audio. So everything is here. So when I select, um, my actual shot, as you can see, everything has been populated automatically and everything is here matching my structure and matching my sequence, um, assembly. Okay, and again, I can go to any of these timelines 
go inside and here I have all my animation clips. I could modify these, I could make these shorter, longer, uh, mix in between and do all the work that I want. Um, so as you can see, this is great because everything is automatically created for you. So, you know, standardization, it is a very important thing in visual effects. So being able to create everything automatically, I, I well, I think it's just, it's just great. Um, okay, let's minimize all of these. So the only thing that we see is actually our sequence with um, our different shots. So it's very easy now to kind of see how everything looks like in real time. And then if you need to work on a specific shot, you just dive in and start populating with uh, your assets, your animations, and um, everything needed for, for your shot. So this is it, very quick uh, overview of the Cinematic Studio tools. Um, I will do another shorter video where we can actually create all of these from scratch with very simple scenes, very simple assets. Um, so we actually know what we're doing from zero to 100. Okay, bye.